application at 19 St John's Road is for the demolition of the existing detached bungalow and the addition of two shallow cell bungalows to the front of the detached three bed bungalow to the rear. From the aerial photograph, you can see the perimeter of the site outlined in red. We have the bungalow in the centre together with a detached garage to the north, bungalow to the north and south, and a two story garden. The photograph shows the site in its existing condition, attached from below and attached garage, and you can just see the edge of the property in brackets to the rear of the site. This photograph is just to give you an idea of the site in context. It's taken from north of the site, looking south down at the envelope. This photograph is taken from the south, looking up to the north. You can't really see much of the property because of the neighbouring property's garage, which is set quite far forward to the building site. But in the next slide, taken slightly further up the road, you can see the bungalow to the rear of the neighbouring garage. This slide shows the layout. We have St John's Road on the edge of the site just here, two detached shallow style bungalows at the front, together with on site parking and landscaped gardens. We have the vehicular access along the side of the site here, providing access to the detached bungalow at the rear. You can see from the annotations here that all of the gardens meet the minimum standards for garden quality and quantity as specified in the design guide. The design guide requires a minimum depth, as you know, of 11 metres. All of the gardens meet or exceed this depth but they are also 11 metres in width. We're providing an adequate garden size for what would be a family, for a series of family houses. I've included this slide because a number of representations received raised concerns about the position of the two shallow bungalows, in that they were forward to the building line created by the bungalows on either side of the site. Now, the green outline shows the position of the existing bungalow, so you can see that actually the position of the proposed dwellings is not dissimilar to that which exists at the moment. The garage protrudes slightly forward, the garage is a single story. There is also an element of variation within the street scene. This shows the elevations of the two shallow bungalows at the front, together with the neighbouring properties at the side. You can see that they're quite well spaced in terms of spacing with neighbouring properties and also there's a, a small space in between them as well. There's a slight variation in height. Again, there are bungalows on either side of the site, whereas at shallow cell bungalows are close to the front, so they will be slightly taller than what's immediately adjacent to the site. But again, there is variation within the street scene, as can be seen on the next slide. These houses are directly opposite. Now, there would be a slight stagger because the gradient within St John's Road decreases from the north down to the south. So even if these properties go exactly the same height, there would still be a slight variation. But you can see here we have a very modest bungalow in terms of height, next to a shallow bungalow, and another bungalow here. So there is an element of variation in terms of height and space and We have elevations here for the shallow cell bungalows. We've already seen the front elevations on the street scene. This is showing the rear and the side elevations. And on this side we have the elevations for the bungalow that would be positioned to the rear of the site. This photograph shows the neighbouring property to the north of the site. It's a bungalow with a number of windows in the side elevation. Again, because of the gradient in St John's Road, although there's a 1.8 metre, 2 metre, if you include the gravel board boundary fence, the windows do still provide glimpses of the site of the fence. This shows the neighbour to the south of the site. There is one window which is described in the report on the side elevation and colour of this not to glazed window. Finally, this photograph shows the property in the brackens to the rear of the site, which would be closest to the proposed true bungalow at the back of the site. There's one update I would like to bring to the attention of members, which wasn't in the formal written updates. It was brought to my attention this morning that there was an error in the report. The report mentions that there would be a separate
calculation distance of seven meters between the proposed rear bungalow here and the edge of number one, the brackens. Now, when measured on plan, it scales as seven meters, but in reality, this property here is not three meters from the boundary, it's 2.6 meters. So that means the separation distance would be 6.4 meters rather than seven edge to edge. Um, this doesn't change the recommendation because it's still above the minimum separation distance that's recommended in the design guide for a secondary window, um, and this is between secondary window and the proposed development. But nothing further to add. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm David Farrell. I'm in number one of Rackham Street. Excuse me. Should I press the... Uh, one big one. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. David Farrell. I live number one of Rackham's. The property at the end, right next to the bunker. <coughs> Let me make the, uh, the first point. That is, uh, uh, I recognise the, uh, the changes made to the layer of the bungalow, which, which, uh, which really deal with most of my concerns. So I'd like to thank Mr. Walsh for that. So, uh, The issues that we still had um, were with the positioning of the houses, which seem further forward uh, than, uh, um, than the plan indicates. Um, obviously, we don't have the benefit of seeing the, uh, the existing bungalow bund overlaid over the, uh, uh, the, the previous. So um, it does seem a lot more than that, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'd be surprised if that's right, but uh, that could be the case. So my thing, my, uh, in fact, I'm surprised. Expressing my views, I'm also not representing neighbours, but, uh, but really uh, um, sharing, uh, relating shared views and concerns about, uh, about the, uh, the position of the properties. Now, what I've got here is, uh, and it's, it's available from the website, is, uh, is the plan for the, the, the map we can write for St John's Road. You can see that uh, all the houses are very much in line. It really is a good example. And uh, I think current very council plan needs to be congratulated over the years for, uh, for such a, a neat and tidy road. And, uh, and long may it continue. Um, in fact, the, uh, the subject property to demolish is one of the original properties, as far as I understand, and played its part in establishing that building line. So, maybe my, our views are on that um, these, these properties at least should to that line, so it wouldn't be a significant change, but uh, but they would be, uh, but with the garages at the front, they would be more noticeable and further forward. Um, but the, I know there is an argument that uh, the property next door has a large um, double garage, but um, that has that does not have the same impact because, as the picture showed earlier, it is largely obscured by a, an attractive, mature hedge. New properties will not have that benefit. So, if the properties could could be made more in line, I think that would satisfy my concerns. That's all I have to say. Thanks, Mr. Right, Mr. Beavis, on the same line, please. associated with the property for over 60 years and was previously owned by their late parents. To that end, um, they as a family, uh, family members, taken the decision, decision to lead the proposal for the site and take an active part in its layout and design. Uh, they appreciate that in most recent years, this domestic residence has not seen the normal level of activity expected from a family home and any change of ownership see normal daily life return to the property, the home, gardens and driveways. The owners have conveyed to us the strongest values of the site, um, in particular the southwesterly aspect and the many benefits this brings to the enjoyment of the property and gardens. 
this has been brought out by, of course, many years of their own personal experience of the, the home. Um, the proposal is to replace the existing bungalow. We are looking at two shallow bungalows. Um, some of the comments have referred to two-story houses, which they're not. They're two-story shallow bungalows. Uh, Fronting St John's Road, and to the rear, we are now reduced um, single-story bungalow. We believe these will provide comfortable three-bedroom family homes. Um, they're similar or lesser sized to those around uh, surrounding the site. The proposal has been developed after some early consultation with the planning department by way of a pre-application request for advice. And then our, thereafter, during the various consultations, uh, some adjustments to the uh, layout, particularly a reduction in the size of the rear bungalow. The, uh, the layout has really been determined relative to the surrounding properties and by keeping the features in a similar position to those of the present. That is, the present driveway, which is on the north side, on the right hand view from the road, is going to serve the rear <coughs> bungalow. The front part of the properties have been placed in the central and to the south um, to maintain the lightness and sunny aspect to the new and neighbouring gardens. There's a lot of emphasis on the uh, benefits of the garden and its aspect. We've had an ecological report and those recommendations are supported by the family's request to retain wherever possible the boundary head rows, um, other shrubs and trees that can remain within the final gardens of the three properties. Um, of course, all the hot, hard and soft landscaping will be uh, agreed Family of watch of interest some of the similar schemes in the neighbourhood. Um, some they like, some they said they like slightly less. Um, they are very keen to maintain the similar size and type of property now seen in St John's Road and not to let the future of the site remain uncertain. Um, they are local residents previously of St John's Road and before in Church Road. Mr. P, this should run out of time. Okay, I'm almost at the end. Thank you very much. <laughs> Members. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> Can we just cover the, the deputy's first point, uh, Rachel, and that is the building line. So the building line as it is now against the rest of the, the neighbouring properties <coughs> and as it's proposed to be. The existing building line of the bungalow is shown in the green pile. Uh, this plan was or is available online, but I added the green myself, so I think perhaps people might have skipped over it, but since I have the highlighter, it wasn't particularly obvious at the time. Um, the building line of the two shallow bungalows proposed, it, it's partially forward, what's there at the moment, because so this bit here of the garage will go slightly beyond the front of the existing bungalow, as would the bit of the garage on this side. But the remainder of the beach property is actually set back from the you know, building line of the existing bungalow. I think the neighbouring property's garage is stepped forward and it, it is, as you've seen from the photographs, a bulky structure. So it's not like all the gardens have open, undeveloped character in this area of the road. And the building line itself is not completely uniform. There is variety within that. So there are you know, slight variations as you look up and down. I hope that's answered your Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I think looking at the building line point of view is that looking at the plan which is on page 16 of our bundle of papers, is it appears to me that this particular property is slightly, and only slightly, um, forward of the building line if you drew a, a line straight the way down the page. But it is slightly um, forward of the building line of the rest of the properties already. Um, but from what one sees there, it's slightly again a bit more. But I would think that it is very much in total. Um, so I have no problems with that situation. 
The only question that I have is to do with the bungalow at the back. Are we taking away building rights to extend that building in any way, particularly in changing it to a um, chalet bungalow? Because obviously, no problems with the chalet bungalows at the front, but I would have some concerns that if that were then suddenly changed to a chalet bungalow. Looking, reading through the conditions, it doesn't appear to be there. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's important, otherwise that could develop into something beyond what we would really want to see there. Other than that, I have no problems. Um, yeah, at present, we haven't put conditions to remove PD rights because the ridge height of the bungalow is so low that you, there wouldn't be enough head height. So if you did want to create a shallow bungalow, you'd have to put a planning application in. It's not something that you would be able to realistically do under community development. It's, it is, you know, a, a fully hit roof. Um, but that's something that we can discuss in more detail if necessary. It's belt and braces. Personally, I would like to still see it there. could have an additional space here, but obviously it would have to be in tandem. It's not required for the number of bedrooms. Yeah, the, the shallow bungalows at the front, originally they had two parking spaces together with a training space within the site. However, the, the development engineer didn't require there to be a training head, and so they amended the plans because they thought it would actually be nicer to have a larger front garden. And that's more in keeping with the character of the area. There are you know, planted gardens in the area, so that was considered Just as a query, um, Lee Smith said, Lee Smith said removing the PD lights would be the roof, but not the PD lights that expand. Extend backwards from the other. Yeah. <coughs> is that what you're saying? Perhaps that is right. I did make my comment specifically on the roof alterations. I mean, if members felt was issues in terms of the garden size, you could also address outbuildings and extensions. That would be a decision for you as members, Chairman. It seems to me it's 13 metres deep and it's reasonably wide. But the members thought there's a specific problem on this side, though. You could do extensions and outbuildings as well. It seems to me for the discussion that roof alterations would be a bigger worry. And extended towards the rear, towards the closest one. I don't think, and I'll ask Rachel, because Rachel's seen the site, I don't think there's a huge amount of space there, Chairman, and I think also at the moment there's restrictions on community development and types of building space boundaries. I'm happy for Rachel to comment on that, perhaps there's more to say. Sorry, Chairman, is the concern of members, particularly in that area, because that's another alternative, is that if, if members were concerned with just this part of the site, yeah. that you remove permitted development rights for extensions or outbuildings within that location, i.e., so if they still had permitted development rights, for example, to do something in here, they could carry on and do so. Yeah. I think my concerns were originally, didn't, wasn't the bungalow moved to try and satisfy the Chapel Gate first deputation? So, an extension on the back of it in that location will just negate what 
what you've achieved by moving the bundle of cycle. Okay. So I think, uh, I've, me personally, I'll just remove the PD by full stop and they can always come in with an application. Otherwise, it's getting messy with start taking bits and pieces off. Yeah, Chairman, I think we are approving um, a three bed dwelling, not a four bed dwelling. So I would agree with you and so propose. Um, one other thing, I think a lot of people find it annoying when they've lived in a, a street of houses and then suddenly one appears in the back garden. What is the surface of that driveway? Because if it's a shingle or something like that, it tends to be a nuisance to people. If it's hard, it's, it's less of an impact on the close neighbour. Um, the details would be agreed by condition, but we'd be looking for it to be something that wasn't really Answer. More likely, it would be hard to sort of block paving something like that. Can we condition that? You can condition it, or you can wait for the details to be approved by condition, because in the report, I think it does actually mention that we're looking for a yeah. <coughs> I'm just happy to go along with officers and make a decision to be uh, yeah. yeah. pre conditional. Chairman, the, the only issue really comes is that if the applicant comes in with a shingle drive and the officers say no, um, does that mean the whole thing goes out um, or does it come back to us? Because uh, I agree with you and what the officers want is a hard surface, but what actually happens is, does the whole thing fall or what? <laughs> Um, normally what would happen is rather than refusing an application, because typically an application for discharge of conditions would come in for a number of conditions, so we would, in that situation, be more likely to approve the outstanding conditions um, and then advise the applicant to come back in with an application just for a shingle, if that's what they would get set on, and then it could come back to committee, if they were so set on yeah. having a shingle. That sounds messy to me, I mean, why don't we just impose a condition we want our surface end off? Happy to amend that condition. Conditioner? Yeah. Right. Half surface driveway. And turning in. Right. Councillor Box. Look at the uh, rear property there. There are three trees in the garden at the back and a tree just across the boundary. They haven't been mentioned as uh, being protected trees at all, but we're changing the site from a fairly green site into a fairly well developed site. And the remaining greenery existing is like trees. So I have a question really about what are those trees? The neighbours may appreciate them as an immunity. Would they be considered for a protection order? Okay. Um, the applicant is keen to retain the trees and the screen along the boundaries. They're not protected because of the majority of them are actually fruit trees, which you wouldn't seek to protect. Also, they're not visible from within the street scene. Although the neighbours might appreciate them, but it's my understanding that the applicant is keen to retain this, notwithstanding the Thank you. Okay. <coughs> right, there's a recommendation. I would like somebody to propose it. Answer seconded by Councillor Price. With those amendments. With the amendments, yes. yes. Those in favour, please show. That's unanimous. That's approved.